Okay, so I got my cat a goose. Well, let's just turn on some lights over here. Okay, so I got my cat a goose jacket back. And it looks brand spanking new. I'm kind of debating whether or not I want to keep it in the plastic and sell it as is. It's not brand new because I see a dry cleaning tag here somewhere. Oh, right there. So it's not brand new, but it's in like new condition. They fixed the um, the arm so it doesn't have like the, um, like it's not uh, bleeding anymore. But I, for all I know, they could have replaced the whole thing. Who knows, right? But um, yeah. And they also replaced the hologram. So, I mean, like if I were to sell this during the holidays, like hello, they wouldn't like, who wouldn't want to receive it like this from Canada Goose in the box. And they also included this Canada Goose like dust cover for the jacket for free. Like hello. This is a $1,200 jacket. Ah! I don't know, maybe I'll list it high. Cause the thing is though, like I've tried this on, this fits like a woman's 2XL. So it's a men's large, but it's oversized. Like these run run large, uh, larger. Um, so even like for a men's, this is an XL or fits more like an XL or like a really loose or puffy kind of large. So I was thinking of uh, reselling it. Cause I mean, I'm not going to be a 2XL forever. I plan on it. 2019 is gonna be my year of being a hot, sexy bitch. So, so this will no longer fit me. Um, yeah, so I guess I should, yeah, I guess the great thing to do is to sell it. Yeah, I should sell it. I'll sell it. I'll post it on Facebook Marketplace and see, see what I can get for it. So here's lunch, just a grilled spicy Thai wrap, a salad, Diet Pepsi, and that's for lunch. Fama and Lucky Rose featuring Trove. Wish you well. I know you just pooped and seen your face And you're giving me a new take on old Let's park over here I actually have two of those actually bought it the year that it came out that uh, Justin Triple because he like I've been like a huge fan of his for like the longest time <gasps> Nirvana that's cute oh they have a little mermaid on blu-ray for five bucks that's actually a really good deal I have this coach but there's some like wear on it there This coach is kind of cute. 38 bucks. Is it even authentic? I don't even know. No, I don't think it is. Yeah, this isn't authentic at all. This one is coach. Not factory, and it's 50 bucks. That's actually not bad for this one. I might get it. Use my 30% off. They also have this one. Whatever that is. This is a super cute color, J. Crew, at 15 bucks. I mean, if I use my 30% off, then I'll get it. But I love this color. Ooh, look at the sleeves. It bells out. That is super cute. It's 50% wool. It's a really cute sweater. Sweater, I'm um, sweaters. Um, jackets. I'm looking for North Face, Columbia, anything Aritzia. Those are the type of, anything high end, obviously. Um, funny they took down the no filming uh, sign at the door but I'm still not going to film people obviously if I see like a hot guy or something I'm not going to film him out of respect because 
one day I will have a brand deal with this Tommy Hilfiger is 55 super expensive but it has the hood that's cute one day I'm gonna have a brand deal with Value Village I'm telling you guys right now even though sometimes I talk smack about them I'm just real I don't sugarcoat shit if I feel something's expensive, I will let it be known. Hey guys! I always like to introduce myself as Miss Philly because people are like, no shit, Sherlock. Well, some people might not know that that's what I like to be called, is Miss Philly. Anyway, um, we just came from Value Village on Pembina. Really a whole lot of nothing, really. I mean... It was okay. I don't know why I bought what I bought. I mean, I kind of know what I bought, what I bought, why I bought what I bought. But I bought a Lululemon gym bag from Salvation Army for 30 bucks. I know that Plato sells those for 70 bucks because they were selling the exact same one for 70. So they probably gave me like literally like $10 for it probably. So I lost money on that. And the reason why I sold it was because it had some peeling on the edge of it. So I was kind of like, eh, cause like I was going to use it. Cause I just picture myself being like a hot skinny bitch and carrying my little lemon gym bag. But what bothers me about that bag was there was like peeling on the faux leather part on the corner. I mean, not the corner, the, the part that holds a strap. So I don't know why I bought this. Why did I buy this one? It was $50 minus 30%. So I literally paid like, how much did I pay for this bitch? I literally paid like $35. I paid like 38 after tax. Literally like $8 mo than the other one. But actually I kind of like this one better because that one was like a purple tie dye. This one is like more like a gray, which is more, I think better like unisex and I don't know. It's, it's in really good condition. A little bit of little loose thread here and there, but I like this better because there's no like faux leather aside from the strap padding. So that's the only place that could possibly, possibly have some peeling, which it doesn't. But otherwise, the bag is in good condition. I actually prefer this style better. The other one is more kind of like neoprene material. This one is more like raincoat material. I feel like this will be more durable. Whatever. I'm just trying to justify my purchase. <laughs> I'm probably going to keep it to myself because I need a hot, sexy gym bag when I'm working out as a skinny hot bitch and uh i mean i could use my louis vuitton one as well but that's just too over the extra i mean it is a keep all 50 but i and it's all like it's really well used so i mean i did travel to toronto with it which i like i got some looks and that was nice so but yeah so we got that i'll show you more in depth of what it looks like mo I sold that coach bag, this coach bag, I sold for $46, I paid 20. No, actually I don't really pay 20. Well, no, I didn't pay 20. No, did I pay 20? I paid 20, I paid 40 for that and then mat, and this mat and nat bag together. So I basically made my money back. So if I don't even sell the mat and nat, I basically, you know, made $6 extra. And that's the way I like it, you know, cause I don't, I just don't like to lose money. I can, I'm okay with like sometimes I'm okay with nickel and diming and even breaking even because I mean I do use that content for my YouTube videos but losing money is just annoying as fuck me no likey la lose la money okay <laughs> so yeah gym bag lululemon and then a couple other things well actually I'll show you when we're at a red light I don't want to show you while we're driving hello endanger people much I was watching Allie's video about how she suffers from depression and anxiety and I commented on her video. I told her, um, you know, I hope she gets through it because, you know, at first I was like, okay, why are you depressed? And I know I hate that I think like that, but I'm going to be real with you. That's what I was thinking, you know, but at the same time, I've gone through that depressing depression, anxiety, and I can, but I mean, hello, I'm a fat Asian tranny. Like who, who wouldn't be depressed? Um, I can relate to people going through that. Cause I went through it and depression is not a joke. I mean, I used to have a friend from a long time ago and she used to suffer from anxiety and depression and 
at the time I was over mine and I got over it myself and maybe because I had this mentality where I did it myself without the use of medication or anything like that or therapy why can't you get over it you know that was my mentality back then and I kind of pushed that friend away and she was just really angry at me because she's like why the fuck are you you know not being sensitive to me why don't you be more supportive as a friend and I kind of regret that and we still have each other on social media and occasionally message each other here and there but back then we used to talk like every day and you know it's just it's and we we have the same sense of humor and got along well so it's kind of sad that that's happened and that was like literally like almost 10 years ago so but the point I'm making is is that I feel sorry for you know I, I, I think it's a really big issue depression and anxiety and it just sucks it really does and sometimes for people medication is what is what's needed I mean for me personally I would exhaust all other avenues before I do medication because when I when I was suffering from depression and well I was actually kind of I don't know if I was diagnosed but I believe my doctor like they didn't officially diagnose me but he said to me that I had a, a, a mild form of mild form of Tourette's and obsessive compulsive disorder but I also I believe I was agoraphobic because I just did not for like the main part of 2005 and 6 I a lot like a lot many months I didn't leave the house and I would just would be so terrified to leave the house because I just felt like people were judging me people were criticizing me people were looking at me and the fact of the matter is even if people were what what who cares that, that's my mentality after but at the time to me it, it felt like the end of the world it felt like oh my god I'm so these people are looking at me I feel so disgusting I feel so you know unattractive they're obviously looking at me because I'm a fat Asian tranny and that's really my mentality for the longest time and that was like over 10 years ago and I there were times where I just be in the house I could not work I quit all my jobs and I was like a hard worker I had like three jobs literally three jobs I would I worked at the hospital I worked at a porno store I worked at a nursing home I was like really rigging in the box you know work seven to seven at uh at the uh, hospital like literally with a 12-hour shift and I would sleep in between and have like a four-hour break and the, the great thing about the hospital where I worked was that we can combine our breaks and it was literally uh, like a three hour and 45 minute break in between and we would just combine that and I would sleep in the cafeteria and after that I would be off at you know 7 a.m. I would go to work 7 p.m. I'd clock out and have to start work until 12 and again midnight is when i started at the porno store and i did the overnight shift there oh my god the stories at the porno store were so funny freaking funny because this was like 2000 2001 so like you know obviously streaming porn was so new it wasn't readily free on the internet you'd have to pay unlike now you could get it for free basically anywhere you type but back then porn was still you know People bought the DVDs and the VHSs and rented, and we also sold sex toys. And oh my God, the hot guys that that wanted, that rented porn. And in my mind, I was like, Why do you need porn? Come back to my house. I will service you myself. But yeah, I was like severely agoraphobic in like 2006, and it got to the point where I would not leave the house. And you know, I didn't even want to leave the house to get groceries. I would order food and have them like I would leave the money in the mailbox and then have them leave the food on the steps. Honestly, one day it was just gone, gone. Like I tried Prozac, I tried and a lot of other antidepressants. I think it was like something Zapam, Clonazepam, Lorazepam, so many Pams that I tried. And literally nothing was help helping me at all, nothing. So I just stopped taking any kind of medication. And then one day, I think it was like 2007-ish maybe. My dates could be off, but I'm thinking it was 2007, like mid or early. I was just like, why? Even if people were looking at me thinking, hey, that's a fat, ugly Asian tranny, who cares? It's not like these people are part of my life. It's not like they're coming over for Thanksgiving dinner. Who gives a fuck? basically is what I my motto was who gives a fuck and that and it just went away like I was out I had fun like I do still have mild anxiety when I go out um, in severe like crowded places ex especially if there's like you know in my view like hot girls or hot guys I'll be very I'll be very self-conscious and very anxiety ridden 
So I tried, and that's probably the reason why I've never been to the club or the bar because of that. I tried to, like, even like going to the beach this year, I was a little bit nervous and I was like, oh my God, there's gonna be like hot chicks and hot dudes. And here I am, like a blubber boat on <laughs> the beach. And, you know, so I remember one time where I went to the beach and I went with my friend and they're her kids. And in my mind, and I could just be totally out of whack and just, it's all in my head. But in my mind, when I went to the beach with my friend and her kids, and my friend was, you know, obese as well. And we went with her kids. Like, I felt like nobody was paying attention to me. Like, I felt like, the, I, in my mind, I felt like, okay, these ladies have kids with them so they can be allowed at the beach. They're fat and they can be at the beach because they have kids and their kids need to be run free, experience the beach, have fun and activities. And I know that's all in my head. And I don't know why, I, like, I, I know why I think that. It's obviously stemming from something deep down inside that needs to be, you know, dealt with. But now I don't really, now I don't really care about that. You know, I still went to the beach this year and I didn't care. I was wearing, you know, something not skimpy, but I was wearing shorts and, a, you know, more, more skin showing rather than a t-shirt. I was wearing a tank top. So I feel like it's progression. But what I'm trying to get at is I can relate to what she's going through. Not maybe exactly, but maybe something similar. So I do genuinely feel feel bad for her, or I feel bad for anybody who has to go through anxiety and depression. It's it's really it's really a a serious thing because it's like, and it's the thing is, it's you're trapped. It's not like I don't want to compare, but it's it's internal. So I feel like it's harder rather than if it's a physical thing. You're struggling with something internal, mentally, psychologically. It's so much more harder because it feels like you don't get a break. You, it feels like you're trapped within your own thoughts. You're trapped with your own outlook of things. And as much as you try to, you try to move forward from it and you try to get better, you end up just ruminating. You end up just playing scenarios in your head. You end up, and the more you focus on it, the more it just won't leave your head. <laughs> Um, I just hope that she gets better. I hope anybody who gets depression, who has depression or anxiety gets better. And I know a lot of you have told me that you do. And I just hope you guys are better or get better. And I'm, I'm so not opposed to medication because if it helps you feel better, then why not? You know, if medication helps you. And a lot of people are so against medicating. They're all about like self-healing on your own. <sighs> Sorry, no. <laughs> my, just my opinion new not that i self-medicated myself when it comes to well i guess i kind of did although i did try medication as an out as a means of healing which didn't work for me but yeah but it's just like i i find it funny when i had when i kind of like broke my arm and then i sprained my ankle i didn't see like a professional for it I basically just let it heal on its own and a lot of people are like well it could be healing wrong the bone could be like I don't think my arm was broken or my foot was broken because if it were you wouldn't be able to like move it at all and you wouldn't be able to like it'd be like dangling or something you know it could just be a hairline fracture a mild fracture it could be just whatever it was but I'm like my ankle is pretty much okay I, I don't think I can still run I'd rather not run because if I do run it it bothers it a little bit but my arm is like completely healed I don't there's like nothing wrong with it at all I mean for all I know inside deep down in the bone there could be like a little little part that didn't heal and one wrong mistake and boom it just snaps again over exaggerating but you can never know with this medical shit I'm not a medical doctor it's just the reason I never got my arm looked at was because at the hospital literally I waited I think it was like six hours and I was like, fuck this shit. I am waiting any more longer because the thing is they don't in, in well, where I'm from, my province and my country, which is Manitoba, Canada, they basically, the hospital I, I go to, which is the main big technologically advanced, in my opinion, better hospital in the whole city. Cause it's just, it's the hospital that's always getting renovated. It's the hospital that's always having money funded going to it. It's the hospital that's always having new buildings around that area demolished and stand up part of the new parts of wings of the hospital so i always like to go to that hospital even though it's the most busiest and it's the most crowded and it's the most longest wait times but to me it's like probably the best anyway 
when I went to the hospital, I was literally, I think I was there for six hours, possibly nine hours. I think it was six though. And then I was just like, I'm not, and I'm looking, and the thing is, they don't see you based on when you check in. They see you based on your emergency, because it was an emergency room that I went to. Uh, and it was a time where I just could not move my arm because it was like numb and it hurt like hell. And I did like a, my own little kind of sling. I think I have a vlog on that actually. And the thing is, I was waiting and waiting, almost gonna come up, someone new would come in with a bigger injury. Waiting, waiting, almost me, someone comes up with a bigger injury. And I'm looking around the waiting room, I'm like, okay, that guy's gushing out of his head. This woman beside me has this thing going on with her neck. <laughs> these are more, like literally, these people are more important. Like they're, they're more deemed as emergency than I was. And I got to a point where I was like, yeah, like I said, fuck this shit, I'm going home. And I just, I think I went back for another time. And the thing is, I couldn't even go to a walk-in clinic because a walk-in clinic would, ha would ha need me to get an x-ray, which would then send me to the hospital, which then would mean I'd have to wait more. So even though Canada's system is free, there's a lot of waiting. Um, waiting for surgeries, waiting for to be seen by doctors. I mean, if you're just generally sick and you just need a prescription for medication, then walk-in clinics are a plenty where I live. And a lot of them are like non-wait times. You go in, they see you, they prescribe you, gone. But when it comes to the hospitals and it, you know, you need to see like a specialist or something long wait times like even like my surgery like woo -hoo, that one it's been i've been on the wait list literally for how long i think actually it hasn't been that long has it been long july <laughs> is that long no i think i called in april no maybe march possibly march yeah march i called them july is when they saw me no july was when they called me back yeah yeah four months to call me back to book an appointment for october so like from march to july zip no no word from them called me in july tells me they're booking me an appointment in october so after the four months it was three months and that was october everything we settled and then i have I haven't heard I didn't hear from them until literally yesterday and they were like your appointment is on Friday I'm like oh you're not even gonna ask me if that works for me <laughs> I didn't say that but I ain't gonna be a picky bitch because you know I've been waiting for so long so and I had another appointment morning uh, that morning this Friday in the morning so I was like fuck I changed that appointment to 15 minutes earlier and then I have to jet from there to my appointment uh, downtown because it's like a psychological assessment although they have sent all my information out to the sex reassignment surgery doctor in montreal the breast augmentation surgery doctor here in winnipeg and the hair laser hair removal here in winnipeg they sent all those information out they still need to do like a medical psychological assessment make sure i'm crazy i'm pretty sure i'm gonna pass with flying colors and yeah so i guess as we're just rambling on for vlog footage purposes <laughs> but yeah i guess there's a little bit of inside of insight of what you want to know about most film so yeah anyway there's this guy i watch on youtube and uh, i was getting like a little bit bored of his content so i kind of stopped watching him for a while but I think he literally had like a thousand or two thousand subscribers. I checked back on his channel. He's literally surpassed me. He's like at 16,000 subscribers. And here I am with just like 14,100. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> I whore myself every day for everybody, and yet I'm still stuck at 14,100 subscribers. Come on now, give me a break. <sighs> All I can do is hustle and hustle. I'm kind of, I wonder how much other people make on youtube uh, that are thrifting channels like i know how much nancy makes because nancy tells me but i think it's not appropriate to ask i think Anne eckhart said how much she made once per month and she's told me to like some information i don't know if i'm allowed to say so i'm not going to say it but she kind of gave me like a ballpark of what she 
earned, but not specifically. So I'm like, oh, okay. But I'm kind of, I'm kind of wondering what, like, you know, like what does Paul Cantu own, uh, earn, or what does EMC Vlog earn, or Rake and Profit, or you know, um, who else? Uh, I don't watch a lot of the controversial thrifting channels like Flipstar, Rockstar, or something. I don't even know their name, or those like. I don't watch people like that because they're just not interesting to me. I watch thrifting channels based on what I'm interested in or if they're cute. Like Bonafide Hustler is like super cute. So I, and he has a hot body. Hello. So that's why I subscribe to him. And his content interests me too. He's from Texas and he's Asian or half Asian, I think. And, you know, Paul can too. I just, not to hate, I just, his, his personality is too much for me. Like he's just, way too loud and way too always trying to be funny like he is funny but he's always always funny like never a moment of seriousness and it's like it, and you know who that reminds me of that reminds me of like robin williams god rest his soul and jim carrey where they're always always putting an act on of trying to be funny that's why i don't always try to do that like i try to s insert something you know here and there but i just don't want to be like that all the time because that annoys me and i feel like that's going to annoy people but I mean, he got over 500,000 subscribers, so maybe it's something to do or something to think about. I'm wondering how much they make, or even like it's Hadrian, how much does he make off of YouTube? Hmm. You guys should ask him. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Don't go over there and be like, Miss Philly wants to know how much you make on YouTube. Uh, yeah. Because I'm so transparent with what I might, with, I, with what I make, and the only reason that I'm transparent with what I make is because I want to inspire other people to do it because you can do it. Like, granted, a lot of my audience, I wouldn't say a lot, maybe like 30% of my audience carried over from my beauty channel days and then the rest might be new. I think that's how it works. Because I was close to 20,000 subscribers when I started YouTube or when I ended my channel in 2011. I was already at close to 20,000, if not at 20,000. So... Mm -mm. Can I go through here? Oh. <sighs> I gotta do the wave every time you okay, why the fuck are you what the fuck are you doing? Okay, we're at the Value Village at uh Polo Park. Obviously we can't film in there. Um but yeah. <sighs> I still film anyway here and there. I don't care. I'm a rebel. Hey guys, so we're just coming from Value Village by Polo Park. We picked up a couple of things, but I want to show you the stuff that we got from the other Value Village. I don't know why I bought these, but I bought them anyway. <laughs> but I bought <clears throat> the Little Mermaid. It was $5 minus 30%. So I basically paid like three or yeah, maybe four bucks for it. But it has a Disney code, which I like because I do collect Disney points. Well, I used to. And it has a DVD and the Blu-ray. And this is like my absolutely my absolute favorite Disney movie of all time, Little Mermaid. And then we got the Jungle Book as well for three seventy-five. I guess has the digital code and the DVD and the Blu-ray. This was a really good movie. I watched it in the theaters. I actually watched Little Mermaid in theaters too back in nineteen eighty-nine. I remember it vividly. I was late walking into the theater. My sister, I was such a little like girl back then. <laughs> My sister was like a tomboy. She wanted to go see Home Alone. I was like, no, I want to go see Little Mermaid. And she's like, no, I want to see Home Alone. And I was like, Little Mermaid. We got this gym bag, Lululemon. It was a little bit expensive, $50. But I know these, I was at the outlet mall and these retailed for, I think it was buy one, get one though. And that was a sale during the, um, it was a sale during Labor Day, I think it was. Otherwise, because when I went back the second time around, it wasn't a buy one, get one. So I think these retailed for 120 US for the buy one, get one. So I guess $60 each and that was on sale plus taxes, obviously. So it probably would have been after conversion. It probably would have been like literally like $80 Canadian anyway for one. So, and it's in really good shape. I like the color. It's gray. It's, you know, neutral. And it's in excellent condition. And again, like I said earlier in the talky portion of the video, 
It doesn't have anywhere that can actually like wear really quickly. I mean, this will fray eventually if you use it really rough, but it's in like excellent condition and it's really clean inside. This would actually make a really nice travel bag too, aside from being a gym bag. And it doesn't smell funky. It doesn't, you know, it's clean inside. There's no funky ass stains, like sweat stains or anything. I basically paid like probably about 38, maybe 40 for it. So it's not too bad for a Lululemon. And then the thing that we got from here is this Columbia jacket. It's a men's medium, but it fits a woman's large. And I got it because again, hood intact and the price is amazing. $13 and it has the interchangeable lining inside that's included the fleece. All the other Columbia jackets were priced minimum $35. So maybe they missed this, but it was priced at $13. And I like the color. I do like light colors during the winter. I just feel like it's more inviting, more, even though I'm always wearing dark. I just like, if I was a skinny bitch, I would totally wear light colors. Like, I love white, so, and white men. <laughs> this coach wallet, three bucks. I thought it was, I like the mustard color. There is a lot of wear on it, and like the inside has a lot of marks, but for three dollars, authentic coach. It's not ripped, it's not severely stained. You can, like, I can get a lot of use for this, and it's just a cute little, and I'll clean it up as much as I can. The interior with zip pocket, though, is hella, hella, like, messed up. Like, I'm going to try and clean it as much as I can. I don't know what the fuck someone did with that, but that's what it looks like. And for three bucks, you can't really beat that. I mean, coach. Just use it as, like, a fuck-around wallet. You know, I'm going to fuck you. I'm going to pay you with my fuck-around wallet. Anyway, that's all that we got. Thank you guys for joining me today. I really appreciate it. And, yeah, how are you guys doing? I hope you guys are doing fantabulous. Uh, Merry Christmas to everybody because it's the holiday spirit and the holiday season. To be honest, I just wish nothing but the best for any anybody. Even people who have hurt me, people who have dissed me, even, like, the haters in the comments, I wish you nothing but the best, even though you're motherfucking assholes. <laughs> but in the end, I just... You know i think every person deserves to be happy at some point and especially during the holidays so anybody who's alone during the holidays you know you know don't feel sad you know just be just think of things to be grateful for think think of things that you know that are positive a great a great way to um a great way to to uh sorry i just got a message so i was like a little bit confused to not think of things is to meditate because when you practice meditation what i like to do is meditate in the shower i'll just lie on the tub with the water like showering down on me because you know it's, it's it is hard for people to find time to meditate but when you're or do i mean masturbate <laughs> i'm just kidding but when you're like in the shower it's something you're doing it's you're there already it's quiet it's you know you're on your own you're, you're doing your own thing so take some time to like lay in the tub and just like even if you don't fill the tub with water just lay there with the water it feels like a, a rain shower that's falling on you and just relax don't think of anything just concentrate on your breathing in and out and it just it, it even though it's only like five minutes because i can't i can't meditate for anything longer than 10 minutes it's just like hello i have shit to do but it's nice to not think of things and to take a break from thinking of things because when you're so focused on not wanting to think about something or something that's stressing you out and that's all you think about all day it's mentally exhausting so even like five minutes ten minutes a day where you're not thinking of that gives you such clarity and like gives you a break from that until that can you know pass through your life and eventually just like be gone like i still struggle with that myself so it's nice to just sit back and relax and think about nothing <laughs> it's, it's a really good break because our, our brains i've read a lot of books and a lot of auto audio audible books about how our brain is constantly churning 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 we don't have any time to shut it off like really the only time that we can shut it off is when we're sleeping so if you're sleeping eight hours a day you're 16 hours a day your, your brain is like moving 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 thinking 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 especially when it's thoughts that you don't want to think about we all need a break from that. Anyway, that's all I have to say. Don't forget to, to remain positive, progressive, and productive. I'll see you in tomorrow's video. Bye.